Hello everyone and welcome to the 2019 Game On Expo in Phoenix, Arizona. This expo was held August 9th through the 11th and this was actually my second year being invited as a guest. On the first day of the convention I actually had a Q&A panel which I'll upload to my second channel because it's an hour long and I'll leave a link to my second channel down in the description below. But as you can see here, this convention was a madhouse. It seems like it gets bigger and bigger every year. And there were times during the day when it was really hard to even maneuver down the aisles. There were so many people. You can see I kind of had to raise my camera up here just to take it all in. Now in this video, I just kind of wanted to show you some of the cool stuff that I saw throughout my time at the convention. And one of the biggest cool parts of the convention for me is the free play arcade. You can see there's a Vanguard cabinet there. There's one that I, I don't see very often at all. And of course, there was a couple of Miss Pac-Man cabinets hanging out. And there's also a Bad Dudes cabinet there, which I enjoyed that game much more in the arcade than like on the NES. And they even had a Dragon's Lair arcade. This is one of the Laserdisc-based games. And all of the animation was done by Don Bluth. Although this game's more fun to look at than it is actually to play. But it was neat to see it here. There was also some people going for Donkey Kong World Records, so there was a couple of uh, cabinets set up there with cameras pointed at them. But you can see there's just rows and rows of arcade games, and they're all sets of free play, which is awesome. So you don't have to spend any quarters. And there's Zax on there. There's another one of my favorite old school games. They had some newer machines too, like this Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, which is actually kind of a fun racing game if you're into games like Cruising USA and things like that. But you can see there's just tons of people enjoying the arcade games. And there's a Strider cabinet. That is one of my favorite Capcom arcade games. I, I'd love to have that one in my garage arcade. Now this one here is Killer Queen, and that's a really new, when I say really new, it's only a few years old arcade game. And there was actually tournaments for this game as well. They even had some really interesting guests from the old school arcade world, like this gentleman here who designed the iconic logo for Mortal Kombat. And they even had some of the actors that played the characters in the Mortal Kombat game as well. Seeing all these cabinets really makes me miss when malls had decent arcades. They even had Mr. Boom Shakalaka. It's the guy from NBA Jam who did a lot of the voiceover work, including the famous Boom Shakalaka line. And now these were really interesting. I showed this DuckTales cabinet last year in my video on the Game on Expo. These are custom cabinets, and they run Nintendo NES hardware, and they have the games in there. And there's just a ton of work put into these. I would love to have this DuckTales cabinet. That's one of my favorite NES games. But this one was new this year. This one's running Ghostbusters 2 and not the crappy American version. It's actually the good game that came out in Japan on the Famicom. And just look at the attention to detail on this. Even all the way down to the speaker grate, it has the Ghostbusters logo there. This is another one I'd love to have. These are just as much pieces of art to me as they are arcade cabinets. This thing really is beautiful. Besides the arcade games, there was also console gaming areas. This is the modern console gaming section. You can see a lot of people here playing Xbox 360. And something else that's really awesome about this convention is all of the cosplay stuff. Here's some people doing Resident Evil cosplay. Got the Umbrella Corporation Arizona Hive. The work and dedication that cosplayers put into their stuff is just really amazing to me. They also love having their picture taken. Look at that thing, that is awesome. He's a good boy. Don't you just want to pet him? <laughs> These guys are here every year too, these Transformers and Decepticon cosplayers, and I love the Starscream cosplay. That's probably one of my favorites. We're being followed by and here's my buddy John Riggs with his on point Dr. Robotnik cosplay. The vendor hall was also very large this year. This is 1UP Games booth, and they're actually located in Mesa, Arizona, and it's one of my favorite local game shops, and they had a lot of interesting stuff to look at. It was really hard not to spend a lot of money here. I love the vendor hall though because it's almost like a museum. There's some things here that I just haven't seen in ages. Some great Super Nintendo games there. 
If you're in Mesa, Arizona though, I would definitely recommend checking out 1UP Games. They're probably the friendliest shop owners I've ever spoken to before, and hey, maybe one day they'll let me do a video on the place. I'd love to. I love the uh, custom case there for Bravely Default. This is Married Guy Gamer's booth, and he's another vendor that's here year after year, and I actually really enjoy looking at this guy's booth, because he usually has some pretty interesting old big box PC stuff, which is one of the main things I've been collecting lately. I noticed lots of N64 and SNES stuff at the convention this year. A little bit less NES stuff, though. It seems like N64 and SNES are kind of the hot systems to collect for right now. It's been getting harder and harder to find games at like thrift shops and garage sales and stuff, so conventions like this are really a great opportunity to find things from all over the country because a lot of the vendors aren't from Arizona, they're from places like Nevada and California, and it's nice to see stuff brought in from out of state. So we got a Misty cosplayer there. And here's Zia Records booth. This is another one of my favorite shops to go to. They carry a lot of retro video game stuff as well as records and a lot of neat pop culture items. It's just a fun store to browse around and they're fairly large as well. And it looks like they've brought some interesting stuff here. They've got a box Odyssey console there. They've got a really interesting old school Sierra game there. And of course they've got some of their more modern clone consoles. Zia Records is another store that I'd love to do a video on, just because, like I said, the stores are really interesting to look through. There's a boxed Fairchild Channel F System 2. I don't think I've ever seen one of those in the box. And here's something I wish I hadn't have ordered on eBay the day before the convention. Here's a Pong game from Sears. It's kind of interesting to see Sears stuff at a retro video game convention, and this price here is unfortunately better than the one I paid on eBay. This is another booth that I love visiting every year. This is Moto's Glass. And this guy does all kinds of custom pint glasses and whiskey flasks and things like that that are etched with all kinds of just interesting nerd stuff. You've got Halo logos, Atari logos. There's some of the flasks there. You've got Godzilla. I just love the way his booth is set up. I think the lights that he puts around really complement the glasses. Got a Goonies pint glass there. His stuff is just absolutely fantastic. The footage here isn't doing these glasses justice. They look just absolutely amazing in person. So many here that I want. Now this booth was new this year, this Gachapon booth, or Japanese capsule toys. And the stuff that are offered in these machines are a lot better than the cheap crap that are in these type of machines here in the United States. I've got a little thing here explaining them and... There was just all kinds of Pokemon stuff, retro gaming stuff. And the prices weren't too bad either. You could buy tokens from them and then use them in the machines. Here's a closer look at some of the Gachapon machines. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that properly. My Japanese pronunciation is terrible, even though I do love Japanese stuff. This booth seemed to be pretty popular throughout the expo. Now this is Sergio Alessandro's booth from Sergio and the Holograms. And he does some amazing video game covers. He does a lot of one-man band stuff, and he's actually let me use some of his music in some of my videos. And he's even got his music on an NES cart there, as well as CDs and cassette tapes that you can purchase. And besides the booth, he actually performed live with some of his holograms, but I'm going to give him a minute to plug his music here. What's up? How you guys doing? I'm Sergio in the Holograms. You guys can check out my work at youtube.com slash Sergio Alessandro or just look up Sergio Holograms. It's a lot easier to find. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Now at the end of the video, I want to show you something really cool that Mark found for us to do at night. And I have to apologize because some of this footage is filmed vertically because I wasn't thinking due to having a few drinks at this bar already. And some of this footage is filmed by my buddy John Riggs and features my other buddy Nerdy Nick, which I'll include links down to their YouTube channel in the description below. But it's a hidden pinball bar that you go through the kitchen doors at the Ziggy's Pizza Place and then go through what looks like freezer doors into an awesome hidden bar. This is the Stardust Pin Bar, 
and this place was nuts. It was just a giant party in here with tons of pinball games. And the reason it's called Stardust is because it's David Bowie themed. Here's some of that vertical filmed video that I mentioned, sorry about that. But this place got super crowded, and there's Mark having a good time. And of course I got to show some of the pinball tables here. They had, I think, about a dozen and a half tables or so, and they plan on rotating them out regularly. And this place is open now, you just have to go to Ziggy's Pizza and go through the freezer door. But that's going to wrap up my video on the 2019 Game On Expo. Of course, just like every year, I had tons of fun here. I enjoyed meeting all of you if you happened to come and say hi or if you attended my panel. And like I said, I will be uploading the entire one hour panel to my second channel, the RA2 channel. And I'm definitely planning on coming back next year and year after year after that. This, this is just such a fun event. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my video on the 2019 Game On Expo. I know it's a little bit different than my normal content, but I do really enjoy this event every year, and John Lester, Gamester81, who runs the event, is always nice enough to invite me out as a guest, so I just wanted to kind of showcase all the neat and awesome stuff that I saw.